I'm so excited to show you this brand new feature on Google Sheets called Tables, where if I add in a new row, then everything comes down from the formulas to the placeholders to the drop down list, et cetera. And if I add in a new column, similar thing happens. These are really, really awesome, just came in. And you can also change the group by view. I'm going to show you how we used to do it and how tables change everything when it comes to Google Sheets. My name is Dave Benheim, and I have tons of videos on Google Sheets, Excel, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering it on my channel. And I love talking about the new stuff, especially this new feature. So let's dive in. So when we don't have a table, it's kind of like this. So you've got your filter area, which isn't quite working. For example, if you filter for this, then it's still kind of ending there. So it's not just showing you those things that you ticked. You've got a lot of other things. So as you add a, add a new column, that doesn't automatically expand. Let's say I'm going to add here a date. So 13th of November, then the formulas do auto populate, but that's because I have to do this whole extra thing of if it's blank, then return blank, otherwise return the formula. And you have to pre-populate that and drag that down. It gets very tedious. And often these formulas will just be wrong because they will not be at the end of the table because someone didn't expand the range. Tables fix all of these things and do a lot more. So let's have a look at them. Now, what often happens is someone has some nice ideas for formatting, for example, red header row and some borders around every cell, but then with some copy and paste or other reasons, it no longer looks very good. So what we're gonna do is we're going to select it and we're going to go to the format tab and choose convert to table. Whatever format you had before is now gone because now it just looks this clean table. I'm going to expand these to make them the right width. And here we're going to see that the header row is in dark green and we've got white, gray, white, gray, white, gray alternating. We can change that, I'll show you how to do that in a bit, but this is a great feature. And then what else happens? Well, if we add in a new row, for example, I'm going to write 19th of November 24, press enter, everything gets automatically added in. For example, the formulas come down automatically. We don't have to pre-populate it with what happened if we had a blank. And it does the same thing here and here as well. The other thing that comes up is drop down this. So everything gets automatically expanded as your table grows. Let me also adjust this one. We also can expand it this way. So if we do, for example, details, press enter, then it will add in a new column and all that formatting comes across. If I was to insert one column to the left, that also gives me a new one that I can do. If you're an Excel user for tables, you'll notice there are very subtle differences that are different between Google Sheets and tables. I find that Google Sheets does it a little bit better for the most part, but there are definitely some areas that Excel does better as well. What are we going to look at next? Well, the group by views. If you click on the views thing, you can create group by view. And here we can choose, for example, type. There we go. Now we have it grouped by the type like that. Now we can either save the view like this, category of event grouping, and then it's saying that it's saved, perfect. And then we can exit the view this way. And whenever we want, we can just go back to it like that. It doesn't give you subtotals, which I think is something that people would find useful. And actually, if you have a non-table like this, if you select it and you go to the data, you can choose create group by view. And this actually tricks you into converting it to a table. First, you have to remove the filter icons. That's easy to do, so I'm going to do that remove the filter icons, select that, and I'm gonna choose the data group by view, and I'm gonna choose a type. Now it has converted into a table, <laughs> a sneaky way to get there. Back to this one. So uh, you can also choose data types. So here, for example, in type, I'm going to choose this to be edit column type, and I'm gonna choose a drop down because these are repeated items. It's going to automatically create that drop down list for me, and I can edit the ones that I want here. I'm going to talk more about this a bit later on, but let's go to the other data types. So in this one, I'm going to choose that this is going to be a date and let's choose this one, this date. It does automatically change it to that style of date. If you go to format though, you can go to number and you can choose a different type. Like I can choose this one. Perfect. Then time, date and choose time. Then yeah, I don't like how it, kind of expands that. It gives you the icons to help you. This is already a drop down list. So this one I could if I wanted to choose a drop down here, but we're not going to do that because I'm going to show you what it's doing later on. And here I'm already choosing places. 
So I can actually click on here, edit column type, and I can choose these things called ch smart chips, which are really smart <laughs> as the name implies. So I can choose place. Perfect. And then it will give you this placeholder. By the way, you can get a placeholder anywhere. If you have here, for example, the time, I can choose that this is going to show placeholders as well. And it will show it to you like that to indicate how you have to enter the time. So one of my favorite bars is called Backstreet Bar. Go for Phnom Penh because that's where I currently live and put it in there. And then it's really cool because the user can just hover over it and see that and get a live link to the map. If they click on it there, they can even get it opening up in a sidebar. This is something that Google invented. And you can also do it for names. So you don't have to highlight it. You can just click on here and I can choose edit column type smart chips and you also have people. And here we'll, we'll go through the people that you have in your Google account that are either inside your organization or outside or linked or whatever. And then you can click on that and it will show you a list of names. There are the other ones in here in smart chips. You have file. So you can upload a file that's saved on your Google Drive. That's pretty useful. Finance will be like stock or currencies. I've never used that one. And rating could be just a rating scale like this, where you can rate from zero to five. I'm going to undo that, control Z. I could add in a new column. So I'm going to insert that. It will put a placeholder name, column 14. I'm going to say, enjoyed it. And I can set the column type here to be a checkbox. Something which has existed in Google for a while is in preview only in Excel, but not yet fully released in attendance. I'm gonna choose here a number. This is a very common data type, a number, a percent or a currency. I'm just gonna do number there. It doesn't have formulas. I wish I could tell it to have a formula that it locks, but it doesn't do that. And also, if you are going to have some text, you can just make it a column type of text like this. And that will allow you to even write in a phone number like that, starting with a zero, and it will not make it into a number, which can be pretty useful. Another way you can get to tables is if you, like wherever, you can go to insert and you can choose a table here, and then it will give you these pre-built ones. So for example, events list, these are the features one project tasks, but you have loads of categories for things you might wanna do. And you could see how it's going to give you the placeholders and everything else. Or help me create a table is going to use AI, Google Gemini to help you do that if you have the right version of it. But I'm not going to show you that right now. So we can also rename it. So if you click in this box, you can just type it over, so events, listing. You need an underscore because if you do a space just to show you, it will tell you it doesn't work. So I'm going to replace that with an underscore, perfect. You can also click here and adjust the table range, but it won't work if you have views and other things that are input already. You can also turn off alternating colors, which is the gray, white, gray, white, just make that one. It does remove the grid lines in between, kind of making it nicer to look at but we can turn that on and we can customize the colors as well. So I can say that that's going to be the header. Let's turn on the alternating colors. If you want more control over the alternating colors, then go to format and alternating colors here. And you can choose this to be maybe a darker shade of gray like that. It's a little bit too much. Let's go for this one. Perfect. So this will auto expand based on what you've given it. So if I add in some new text here, it has auto expanded with all of those details. Now you can also revert to unformatted data. So this is just going to reset it as not a table. It will disassociate these views, press okay. That will go back to how it was. I'm gonna control Z that and get it back. You can delete the table. This will delete everything as the name suggests. What about the other features in these dropdowns? Well, you can sort the column A to Z or Z to A. You can filter it. It will give you your regular filtering menu and you can group by column. This is another way to choose the grouping. So I can choose here, group by column and it will just group it by those ones like that. And if you don't want to keep the view, then click X here. Don't save. Otherwise it will just store it as a backup. And then you can get a long list here that you don't necessarily want. You can also insert or delete, and it will not insert or delete anything around it just in that table. So if I have some data here and insert one column to the left, we'll keep these right next to each other. Now, if you don't want these kind of drop down views, you just want the regular filters, just click on the filter here and it will replace those 
and get rid of the filter and it will bring those back. What I'm gonna do is add in a new formula column. So I'm going to just start typing and I'm going to say this is price, price enter. You do often wanna have blanks in between. So I'm going to insert left and not have that be a table. I'm gonna choose this one attendance minus say $3, press enter. And then Google knows that I wanna do that probably for the whole column. So just click tick or press control enter and that will do it for the whole column. Now you can overwrite it. So if you do want this to be another formula, that's fine. And then you can press X. But usually from my experience, you wanna keep a consistent formula for the whole column. So that's all really good, but I love how it deals with formulas when you have got entire columns. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to just copy and paste this to another worksheet, control V, and it's pasted it as a table, which is kind of nice. And I'm going to copy that again and paste it as a non-table by clicking on here and choosing to revert to unformatted data. Now, if I was to do a sum equals sum of this data and close my brackets, it will give me 530. If I was to add in a new number here, then this will not get added to the total. And we know that that's a very common issue in Excel and Google Sheets. However, this is such a common error that it even has its own name. It's called an error of omission in the accounting world. That's how often it happens. Well, what about if your source data is a table? Well, if I do equals sum of this one, it's saying equals sum of table one, and I'm going to close the brackets like that. It's going to be called 530. Now, if I add in another number, that gets automatically added into it. Why? Because it is summing everything in the table. Now, if I was to rename the table to be attendance, enter, now, this is going to be equals the sum of attendance. Now let's say I want to add in a new column. So I can add in a number like this. And this is now adding everything in attendance, which is now two columns wide. But what happens if I want to change this to just be the first column? I'm going to say equals sum of just this one. And it will be the attendance table and the attendance column. Close my brackets and it will be that. And again, if I add in some new numbers, that will be added in as well which is really useful. So everything that's linked to the table will automatically grow. So going back in here, so here, for example, I have an XLOOKUP function, love XLOOKUP, that is looking up this value in the column called event and returning the column called date. However, brunch is not in this list. Well, if I add in a new row for brunch and then I add in a date, so 17th of November, suddenly that will automatically populate here because when you write the formula and just to show you how it is, so look up that value in the lookup range is going to be this column. If I go exactly to the top, not including the header, it will show me event. If I go one above or one below, it will show me the regular cell reference. Then I press a comma and I am going to return this and go all the way like that. Interestingly, if I drag this across, this formula, now it is still looking up event and date. So it's kind of like if I'd have pressed F4 to lock in the start and end value, it doesn't work with relative referencing. Another way to think about this is if I select it and I insert a pivot table, then the data range for the pivot table is the table called events listening. It's not to do with the cells that start at A4 and end wherever the table ends, and therefore it doesn't grow this will automatically grow as new data comes in. Drop down lists do expand. So if I was to select this and make it into a table, convert to table, then if I was to add in six and seven, then if I look in the drop down list, it will show me those expanded options, which is pretty cool. A couple of ways that it works differently with shortcuts. If you want to select an entire column, it's often control space, a control and space if you're in a table, select from the top to the bottom of the table, including the headers, slightly different to Excel. Shift space will select the row from the beginning of the table to the end of the table, which is useful rather than formatting everything all the way until the end. Now I'm going to expand and insert 
two columns to the left, and I'm going to split this. So this is going to be continent and country. And I'm going to say equals split. I love this function. This one, I'm going to split it at the chevron with space before and after. So that will give me the result in two different rows. Excel, this actually wouldn't work because uh, you can't use these formulas that return multiple cells inside tables. In Google Sheets, you can. Now, there are a few limitations. For example, the unique function or anything that will return a whole table. If I do equals unique of this, this will return all of the unique values. If I was to make this into a table, then I go to format, convert to table, then it will look like this. And if I was to say that actually I'm going to add in UK, that's going to grow because it's inside the table. But if I'm going to also say Europe and Portugal, enter, this is going to grow below the table. So dynamic arrays, which are formulas that return multiple rows and columns, do go outside the table. They don't auto expand. This might change in future, but this is what I have found. You can't have a formula in the header row. This is similar to Excel. So if I write equals to a cell, it will tell me I can't do that. And also you can't merge cells inside a table. It will tell you you can't merge cells inside a table. Comparison to Excel doesn't freeze panes automatically. So if you are going to scroll down, you're not going to see these as your headers, which is fine. I don't find that's too much of a thing I take advantage of. And also you have structured references for the whole column only, but you don't have a structured reference for the header name or for something in the current row. So these next couple of things are things that I find are not the complete solution with the features that Google has over Excel. So if you do have dropdowns, I love using dropdowns. And if I edit the column type and go to dropdown, I can edit these. I can even change this to dropdown for a range where I select it, but I am a bit limited here. So in advanced options, I can change it to an arrow, which I always do, but I then also can't change to other types of data validation things. So someone can still enter the wrong thing and it will just show them that red mark. I can't change that. That is the default setting with Google's Sheets data validation. However, you can change that. So here I have some data validation. If I go to data and choose data validation, I get this pop up on the right and this is it. And here I have a lot more control in advanced options. Specifically, I have what to do if the data is invalid. And I wish it would do that. Even if I show this as a date, if I was to type in some text, it will just show me that it is invalid, but it is not something I can change. If I click here on edit column type and choose date, all I can choose is the date. I, I won't get any options afterwards. I wish there was a thing here to say block invalid data, but unfortunately that's not something that it can do at the moment. Maybe that will come in future. It also kind of covers these cells or this one cell, one or two cells. So just be aware of that. It can be a little bit frustrating that you can't read what's behind it. And there's no way around it, even if you click outside the table. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed that video. My name is David and I'm and I have tons of videos on Excel, Google Sheets, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.